You know, Cavs been in an interesting place. Um, and I, I'm I'm officially a bit concerned about them at this point. Now, my level of concern isn't like catastrophic. Like I don't think they're gonna fall all the way into the play in again if like Mitchell can come back during the regular season and everybody's healthy. But eh, it's not it's not looking as great as it once did. And again, we're relatively, we're talking about a team that's 29 and 20, which is really good, right? 29 and 20 is usually enough for a top four seed in the NBA. But we're also talking about a team that was once a top three seed in the East and right now is a five seed and what? Two games away from being the six seed, three games away from being the seven seed. And a handful of way, games away from being the five seed. So, like, there's a healthy distance. But remember, man, I wanted the Cavs to be able to get a top three seed this year because I don't want to play in that four or five game. Because that four or five game is going to be a massacre, right? You got the Boston Celtics playing championship level basketball. You got the 76ers playing championship level basketball. You got the Bucks playing championship level basketball. And you have the Nets playing pretty good basketball. I don't know if they're championship level, but they're pretty damn good. You don't want to play Kevin Durant in the first round. Like, that's not where you want to be, but that's where you are right now. And we're waiting for news about Donovan Mitchell because he had a groin injury, played through last night, and then on the last shot attempt, hurt his groin again. And it looked like a significant pull of that groin. So we're talking about, I mean, like, I'm going to be real with y'all. It feels like at least till the All-Star break is over, he's going to be out. Like, I don't think he plays in the All-Star game. I would be very surprised if he plays before the All-Star break is over because they're going to want to play it safe. But then you look at this schedule up until the All-Star break, and ah, it's it's not really like you, you don't want to be without Donovan Mitchell here. Yes, you play Houston. Yes, you play Oklahoma City. You should be able to beat those two teams. But then you have L.A., you have Miami, which is going to be a tough game. You have Memphis, which is going to be a tough game. Um, Indiana always plays you very tough. Uh, Washington, you should beat them. Um, Detroit, you should beat them. But then you have New Orleans. That's going to be tough. Chicago, eh, you probably should be Chicago, San Antonio. But then you got 76ers. You have Denver. You have Atlanta. Toronto, who you have not beaten yet this year for whatever reason. Boston, Boston, Miami, Miami. Like, you know, you well, I went past the All-Star break. But you see, like, losing Donovan Mitchell here for a month can be the difference between this team fighting back, getting a win streak, getting back into that three-seed conversation versus – falling to like the six or seven seed you know um with donovan with donovan mitchell out they're only going to be but so good that's really where the concern is and you know i'm searching frantically for updates about donovan mitchell um and any update about his health i haven't seen one yet um but that that's part of the problem but that's not the only problem right donovan mitchell being hurt again and, you know, I hope it's just a couple weeks. I hope I'm just overreacting. But it feels like he's going to be out for the, till the All-Star break. And if that's the case, I'm a bit concerned here. Um, also, some of the things I'm concerned about, you really got to find a way to trade Karis LeVert. And, look, I, I know that there are some Karis LeVert stands in chat. You know what I mean? Like, I hear from them all the time whenever I don't say pleasant things about Karis LeVert. It's been a fun experiment, but he's got to go. And the reason he has to go isn't anything that's going to stand out on a stat sheet. But if you watch the games, you know he has to go. Like, most people I know that watch these games feel like Karis got to go. And the reasons Karis has to go is because Karis is the most irresponsible dude with the basketball of all time. Um, and when you have a team that is full of guys who who turn the ball over, Evan Mobley turns the ball over quite often. Isaac Okoro on offense can turn the ball over. We give the ball to our bigs, so we're going to have a higher turnover rate because Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, the bigs, just turn the ball over more often because they have the higher distance to dribble. And Darius Garland's not the most secure point guard of all time either. It's too many turnovers. 
it is way too many turnovers. And, and Karras has turnovers at the most inopportune time. And that continues to plague this team. Evan Mobley has to do something about these turnovers. He had three of them last night. Um, again, the turnovers are killing this team. And the more minutes we give to Karis LeVert or the more times we add pointless turnovers. Because you know what? With Evan Mobley out there, I can live with the turnover because he's one of the best defensive players in the NBA. And he'll put you, he'll give you at least 10, sometimes 20 on a great night, 30. It's okay that he turns the ball over. Ultimately, Darius Garland averages 20 and eight. It's okay that he turns the ball over, but sometimes Karis LeVert be giving you nine points and three turnovers. And that's just ridiculous. You can't have that. It's not a sustainable way to win the game. I wanted to see how he would look like with Ricky Rubio out there. It looks worse. Um, And look, sometimes he'll have these games where he puts up good statistics and people say, hey, he played well. But, man, I swear, if you watch the games, you'd be like, he did like four or five things that went directly to a loss. And whether it's fouling a three-point shooter three times in a row in the fourth quarter for whatever reason, causing a team that was down seven to be up two and win the game against Utah, whether it's just careless turnovers late in the fourth quarter that consistently cost this team points down the stretch, he's got to go. I don't know what you can get for them, but get something. They don't have a wing that can shoot. That's causing issues. Um, And this bench, it just hasn't gotten together. I mean, another night, we got 12 points from the bench. Nine of them from Karis LeVert. And, like, Karis, like, as much as I talk about him, the reason he's on the team is because he's the only one that comes off the bench and scores. Kevin Love's been abysmal this year. Like, I don't know what the averages are versus last year, but he stinks. Um, and, and part of me is just hoping and hanging on that, hey, maybe he just turns it around. But another part of me might just, he might but just be cooked. We we don't know yet. But what we do know is that Kevin Love usually plays better in the regular season than he does in the postseason. So I, I wouldn't expect much more from Kevin Love than what you've already gotten this year. Um, And he's only giving you 8.5 points a game. And I feel bad because, to be honest with you, the 8.5 surprises me. I'm surprised he's averaging that much. Because I every game, it seems like I'm looking at Kevin Love's stat line, and he scores two points. It's ridiculous. And the thing that's concerning about Kevin Love is that he has been this bad since December was yeah since no no since November no okay so he had a good December last year a decent January and then he had a bad March and a good May, April so at least it's not carrying over from last season that's good but the point is he stinks this year like I'm not even trying to be mean or rude towards Kevin, but he's shooting 43% from the field. Well, no, 38% from the field. That's an all-time career low outside of the dismal, dismal 2018-2019 season he had. Um, from three-point, he's at 35%, which is about as low as he's ever been outside of like his first year in Minnesota where he shot 10. Kevin's... Kevin's consistently been a double-digit scorer. He hasn't scored in double digits in a very long time, and he's not even averaging it anymore. So Kevin Love, who was supposed to be one of your key death pieces off the bench, he's kind of like he looks cooked. Defensively, it's hard to have both. Like it, it, The thing was, too, with Ricky Rubio, he was going to get better, but he hasn't. Um, and two, defensively, you can't have both Ricky Rubio and Kevin Love out there. Like It's just, it's just not sustainable. At this point, Dean Wade only played four minutes. I would like to see that reverse. Maybe Dean Wade, like maybe what the Cavs can do with Kevin Love is what the Boston Celtics do with uh, with Blake Blake Griffin, where they just play him like every three games. And then Dean Wade could take those minutes and we could see if Dean Wade can develop into something because whatever's going on with Kevin Love, man, he looks tired. He doesn't need to play as much. He doesn't need to take the beating that he does when he takes all those charges. He needs to play less. 
He really does need to play less because it's starting to show. And he's going to have nothing for the playoffs left if this is how we continue to use him. And I'm talking about a dude who only had 12 minutes game. So it's not good. Um, look, they put Isaac Okoro back in the starting lineup. I don't know if that's the right thing. I know why they want Isaac to be back in the starting lineup, and they so desperately want that thing to work. Isaac's not a three in today's NBA. I'm, I just don't think he is. He's not a wing. He's short. He's 6'5". And it's like, 6'5 is not short by any. But, like, when you're talking about wings, like, he needs to be 6'6", six, 6'8". Six, six, He's not long. The longer guys usually can shoot over him. It, he like defensively, the benefit isn't there unless he's out there with like Karis Levert or out there with uh, Ricky Rubio. It doesn't make sense to have him out there when Donovan Mitchell is out there. But you can't have, uh, but you, but the only other option right now in crunch time is to put Karis Levert out there, and that's even worse. They got to figure it out. They need to make some trades. They need to make some moves. Um, and they need to hope that Donovan Mitchell isn't going to be out for an extended period of time because that could be the difference between getting the, getting the three seed to dropping all the way to the six, maybe even the seven, and having to play in the playing game. So Cavs need to get that together. I'm officially a bit concerned about them. That being said, we'll see how they uh, shake this through. Um, but, yeah, that, those are the things I'm a little bit concerned about.